Hey everyone, welcome back to Islander Robotics. I'm Will, and today we're going to be talking about what I wish I knew about step-down buck converters before I started this behemoth over here, Wolfie the Artificial Intelligent Dog. So, let's get started. Real quick guys, before I continue on though, if you have no idea what a step-down buck converter is or what it's used for, then I really suggest going and watching my other video that I just posted before this one. It really does go down in the simplest forms. What is a step-down buck converter and what is it used for? All right. The very first step-down buck converter we're going to be talking about today is the LM2596. And now I'm going to talk about what really made me decide to start using the LM2596 because I really do think it is a very, very good buck converter that you can use with all sorts of little electronics. For instance, where did I put it? The Arduino Nano or any Arduino. This little buck converter works very well. You just literally hook this thing up on, these are all the pads, you solder the wires on here, and then you solder the output wires here, and this little pot right here allows you to adjust the voltage that is being produced outside of it. That is what controls the output. Now in order to control the output, you also have to hook up a multimeter and get the voltage that way. Before you plug it in to a Arduino or any, or any of these buck converters, you have to make sure you're not producing more. You have to make sure that this thing is not producing more voltage than what your electronics are rated for. Because trust me, I have blown up many, many components just because of how I was doing a careless mistake. Now, the size, the simplicity, and the voltage range of the LM2596 really is great for people that are just getting into robotics, or people that are just getting into microcontrollers, coding. This buck converter is perfect for you guys if you're trying to take that high voltage and convert it to a low voltage so your microcontroller does not make some magic smoke. The LM2596 is not for everyone. It is not for every application. Yes, like I said, small robots, beginners, you're not going to really hit the limits of this buck converter unless you start working with computers like a Raspberry Pi or the Jetson Nano like what's in Wolfie you're gonna find the limitations of this buck converter very very maddening and the main limitation of this buck converter is the amperage the output amperage it produces it is 3 amps now yes a Raspberry Pi does run on 5 volt 2.5 amps but what I have found with the LM2596, they really do not produce that 3 amp. When I hook this thing up to a Raspberry Pi, it is really struggling to get the energy it needs for it to actually work precisely, consistently, and um, reliably. Now, I do have to admit, around this time period of getting the LM2596 and having all these issues, I was already starting to look at the Jetson Nano for Wolfie. The orientation I have my Jetson Nano running, its peak amperage is four amps. That is a lot higher than the Raspberry Pi. Another great thing that this buck converter taught me was that I needed to level up the whole circuitry, the whole plans of Wolfie for him to be reliable. As well as I kind of made my own rule now for buck converters, which is the buck converter's peak output equals the total amperage you need from that buck converter plus one. Now I say plus one just because like those of you who have watched my videos have noticed I keep on saying give yourself a little wiggle room. And buck converters really do need that wiggle room. When you're working on anything that's like Wolfie, the amperage isn't always going to be consistent. When I say the peak amperage of the one leg is 3 amps, that does not mean that that leg is always at 3 amps. It is leveling usually, it's leveling like 1.25 all the way up to 3 amps. So it is really like, those things are really playing a factor if when you're using the LM2596 because it cannot produce what you need. After the LM2596, I decided to go big or go home. And I mean that literally. I got a buck converter, the constant current, constant voltage buck converter that is huge. This thing is like a monster compared to the other buck converters I have for many reasons, not just because of the size, because of the out the input voltage this thing can take is 1.5 all the way up to 40 volts. Now, not only that, but the output voltage is 1.2 all the way up to 36. 
and this thing can produce 20 amps but this thing has two pots inside of it one for the constant current one for the constant voltage so therefore you can control that 20 amps from anywhere from 1 to 20 which is great it this thing can really produce the current I need for my whole system however when you have a variable current buck converter it causes some major headaches when you get into those higher level robotics projects where you're working on working with a Raspberry Pi or in Wolfie's case a Jetson Nano a variable current is not going to be your friend because the only way you're going to be able to tell what the current is with this thing is by hooking up a multimeter in between this and whatever mini computer you're using and turning turning on that mini computer and reading the current that's being on the multimeter guys if you have a voltage drop while this thing is powering up it will turn itself back off it will not let itself turn on if you use this type of current this type of buck converter you're really going to have to be turning it on and off on and off and while at the same time adjusting that current knob so that you can get the current for it to boot up but guys the boot up amperage is not the same as the peak amperage meaning when you get that thing to boot up for the Jetson Nano it's 1.25 then if you're planning on doing what I'm doing and having artificial intelligence running throughout this board it can't be it's going to be drawing more than 1.25 it's gonna be drawing 4 amps so you're gonna to have to do an extra step on top of that and by getting the Jetson Nano to be running at full computing power. Here's the other catch. You have a voltage drop during that time period, the Jetson Nano will turn off. It will kill itself. And you're gonna to have to do the whole process all over again where you turn it on, wait for it to boot up, and then get the code going again. If it's even saved. Because when you're doing this on and off, on and off, with a computer like the Jetson Nano or the Raspberry Pi, you have a very high risk of damaging your SD card. You have a high risk of damaging the iOS as well as the code you work so hard on is going to essentially get lost if it does kill itself too many times and it just the SD card just loses all that memory. It is not worth it when you can get buck converters that are more specific to the amperage like XY3606. More on that in a sec, I just really want to finish off what I'm trying to say about the constant current, constant voltage buck converter. It really is a great buck converter when you have when you're not risking damaging all your hard work by having the code get deleted because you're on constantly turning that current on and off, on and off. It really is not reliable enough to be using it with those computers. I cannot stress that enough because you are risking damaging your hard work on those computers. But it really is great for heavy duty stuff where you don't where you have an idea of what the current's going to be, but you're not fully sure. So you should get a buck converter like this with a variable current. And once you do know what that current is, get a buck converter like this, all right? The XY3606. Now the XY3606 is great. I This thing is, this is the main buck converter inside of Wolfie because of a few reasons. One reason is that you really have multiple connectors to give this thing power as well as multiple connectors to get the output power to come out. As well as this thing takes anywhere from 9 to 36 volts and constantly produces 5 volts, 5 amps, no matter what. Which is great for my application because nothing in the whole system is over 5 volts. As well as nothing in Wolfie's system is over 5 amps. As well as it follows that rule I stated earlier about the LM2596 where you have to make sure Whatever you want the rating for this um, buck converter is, you have to add one, you have to add plus one. So let me rephrase that. Whatever you want the total current of this buck converter to be, you have to take the main, the total amount of current that's going to be coming through this thing and add one amp. That one amp will give you enough wiggle room. And in some cases, this thing is giving me two amps of wiggle room with the servos or 
one amp with the Jetson Nano. And so the Jetson Nano is always able to be running. There is no question for me to on if my system is going to fail. If the Jetson Nano is going to suffer a voltage drop and turn itself off. It is made for these things because you have a screw terminal and a USB-A female connector on here which is perfect for your Raspberry Pi. It is perfect for your Jetson Nano. Not only because it's producing the amperage you need, but it also gives you a variety of different connections so you really don't have to scratch your head on how the heck am I going to connect this buck converter to my whole system. Not only does the connectors of this thing give itself some brownie points with me, but its size. It is probably the same length of this one, but it is like half the width of this one. All right, so I'm able to jam a lot more stuff into the buck converter bay, the power distribution bay. That makes Wolfie work more smoothly. But it's not just all great about the XY3606. One thing I really do wish this board had was some screw, screw holes. Just because in order for me to implement this thing into Wolfie, I had to come up with some creative stuff, which you guys will see in a later video. But this thing, I, it's like basically impossible for you to put this thing into your robot unless you make some kind of contraption to hold it into place. As well as, there is no real labeling on these terminals on which one's positive and which one's negative. If you don't need that 5 volts, if what you're running does not run at 5 volts, and it needs more than 5 amps, this buck converter is not for you. This buck converter really is for someone that knows what amperage they need, what they've done all the tests like I've done to figure out what the what they need, what they don't need. This buck converter is perfect for those of you who are just like looking for another option that's always reliable, always constant, no matter what, it's going to be popping out those numbers you need to be running your system. This thing is perfect for those people. I just want to state, the pros and the cons that I have mentioned for these buck converters only apply to me, meaning my perspective with Wolfie, all right? Guys, if you're running a project and any of these buck converters I stated, I showed you guys, any of these styles or types or whatever, really, th you really think will work for your application, go for it, all right? Don't take my, con my pros and my cons too hard, all right? Please, guys. If you see stuff on here, on this channel, and I'm talking like pretty poorly about it, but you think it'll work for your application, then go for it. Which is exactly why down in the description bar below, I left links to all the buck converters I used in this video. The Jetson Nail, the Raspberry Pi, so that you guys don't have to be searching around on the, on the internet if any of the stuff I talked about actually interested you. However, those are affiliate links which help support this channel to keep on giving you guys great free content. So if you want to see how these buck converters are used in my project, Wolfie the Artificial Intelligent Dog, then you guys, hit that subscribe button. Those videos are going to be coming out soon because I have to take them apart and since I have them apart, I'm going to be discussing everything that goes on underneath the hood of Wolfie. Alright, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.